Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to show you how I paint this pretty window. This is a combination of three reference photos that I liked, which I'll also go through as I show you the steps. So to begin, I'm just going to mask the sides of my sketchbook and this is just to make sure I get clean lines along the side. I'm just eyeballing the position and I want to make sure that the tape is more or less straight to create a neat frame for the painting. So here are the three pictures that I found on Pinterest which caught my interest. For this first one, I really love the color combination of the light blue or periwinkle blue with the warm yellowish tone of the wall, so I decided to use that as my main colors. For the second one, I really love the style of the window. I love the arch and also how the bricks form on top of the arch to frame the window. So I'm going to use this design for the window shape. And as for the last picture, I really like how the flowers are positioned in front of the window, creating this large cascading bush of colorful flowers, which I'm going to reference roughly for the painting as well. Before I start painting, I want to sketch out the window first. I want the position to be right at the center of the page, so I cheated a bit and used my ruler to find the center point and line the middle as my grid. Then I use this line to try my best to eyeball the size and also the symmetrical shape of the window. To do this, I tried drawing a rectangle first and then I tried adding the arch on top of the rectangle to make it a bit easier to figure out how arch I want the top to be. After I have the basic shape of the window, it makes it so much easier to draw out the brick frame, which I just made up here. And I also want the shape of the door of the window to follow the reference image of the arch window. So the shape follows the shape of the window, but I want to follow the detail of the wood pattern from the first reference image because I really like the texture it creates with the blue. Here I'm just adjusting the angle and the width of the door. This time I don't want them to be completely even, so one door can be a bit more angled and narrow. This is just very slight, but I find that this makes the composition look less stiff, but of course this is completely up to you. To give the window frame a bit of depth, I doubled the thin frame here. It's just very slight little details which can help the painting look a bit less flat. Here I'm going to divide the sections. You can make the squares as big or as little as you like depending on the size of your painting. And I'm just going to do a single line for those sections since I decided that it's going to be much easier to paint each section on top with white gouache. So I can just layer it on top of any dark color I choose to paint the glass for the window. As for the plants, I'm just going to roughly place the position but I feel comfortable painting it freehand so I'm just going to leave out the detail of the flowers and the leaves so I can paint with more flexibility later on. Okay, so that's all I need for the outline. Before we begin to paint, let me just go over the colors. Firstly, this is Chinese White by Holbein, Graphite Grey by Daniel Smith, Ultramarine Violet by M. Graham, Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Permanent Yellow Deep by Holbein, John Brilliant No. 2 by Holbein, Burnt Sienna by Holbein, Sap Green by Holbein, Vermilion by Holbein, and lastly, I'll also be using Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martens. I'm going to start out by using a mixture of Sap Green and Permanent Yellow Deep. And I'm going to use this to paint the greeneries which is framing the window. I'm just using the tip of my brush and tapping it at different angles to create 
the leafy texture and I try to play around with the color mixture so whenever I want a lighter green I add a bit more permanent yellow deep and if I want a darker green I add more sap green in the mix. I'm also leaving a bit of white space here and there so the placement doesn't look too bulky and this is because I'm still going to build on the layers with darker greens later on so I try to make the leaves here a bit more sparse for the first layer. Here I'm not waiting for whatever I painted to dry yet as I'm switching the color mixtures because I want the paint to travel naturally creating a looser effect and a softer blend between the darker green and the yellow green. Next I'm going to use vermilion to paint the flowers. I'm also going to alternate the color by mixing it with permanent yellow deep to create more of an orangey color and if I want the color to be a bit lighter or a bit more yellowish then I would just add a bit more permanent yellow deep in the mixture. The reason why I'm painting the flowers first is so I can just paint the greeneries around it later instead of guessing and leaving out spaces if I paint with the green first. Of course there's also another option of using white gouache to create a white base on top of the greens that you've just painted which I'm also going to show you to create the flowers for the surrounding bush framing the window. This way you have two options and you can choose whichever is easier for you guys. Here I also painted smaller flowers and I tried to also rotate the V slightly so there's a natural distribution. And by the way, you can choose any color you want for these flowers or you can also paint any type of flowers. I just want to keep my composition simple so I decided to just paint these basic five petal flowers for my painting. As for the greenery surrounding the flowers, I alternate the colors just like before but this time I made it into a bush and of course I'm also leaving out a little bit of white space here and there so it's not too overly bulky. This time though instead of just using the mixture of sap green and permanent yellow deep, I also create a darker green by using sap green and also ultramarine violet to darken the green and make it a bit more bluish a bit further and I'm just alternating between the colors not letting it dry in between. I'm also using quite a thick consistency for both of the light green and the darker green and this way as it mingles with each other it's not traveling as fast either because the paint is actually quite thick. As you can see from the color combination here, the lighter green creates the effect that the leaves are placed a bit further forward and as for the darker green, it looks like it's in shadow and further back. So as you arrange the placement of the colors later on, keep this in mind. Next, I want to paint the creamy yellow wall and before that, I'm just going to dry everything off to make sure that the green doesn't travel across the yellow and I also clean my palette before I mix the color to make it nice and vibrant. For the color of the wall, I used a mixture of buff titanium, John Brilliant and permanent yellow deep. This is something that you can adjust. If you want the color of the wall to be a bit more neutral and muted, you can add more buff titanium. If you want the color to be more creamy, you can add more John Brilliant. And if you want it to look a bit more yellow, you can add more permanent yellow deep in your mixture. In order to distribute the color well, I use a lot of water in my mixture and I'm also using a soft brush which means the bristles can hold a bit more water compared to synthetic brush. So if you're using synthetic brush, you can use something that's a bit larger, something that's easier for you to spread out the color. I do want to work fairly quickly for the base color because I don't want the edges of the paint to bloom and create an outline along the sides but at the same time I don't mind a bit of texture from the value and slight changes in color to make the wall a bit more uneven and textured and this way it will look less flat and I also keep in mind that I want the light source to come from the top so I painted the top part with a bit more water compared to the bottom so the top is a little bit lighter. You can see that I added a little bit of burnt sienna to the wall mixture and this is just to increase the value slightly and I'm displacing it underneath some of the plants and windows and also at the bottom 
And to make the color slightly uneven, I just use burnt sienna by itself and just tap it around underneath the greeneries to add a little bit more value. After that, I want to make sure that the base color of the wall is completely dry before I use a light consistency of buff titanium with a tiny bit of John Brilliant to paint the light colored bricks framing the window. Next, I want to create the light periwinkle blue by using a mixture of Chinese white with ultramarine violet and I'm using a thin consistency to paint the base color for the window covers. Here I added a little bit more ultramarine violet in the mix and I'm going to paint on a slightly thicker consistency for the vertical wooden planks but I'm doing this quite randomly and I'm leaving parts with the base color to create an uneven texture. I'm going to leave the base color to dry off now and next I'm going to create a mixture of graphite grey with the ultramarine violet and I'm going to use a very thin watery consistency to paint the base color of the glass window. Here I'm dotting a slightly thicker consistency at the bottom while the surface is still fairly damp and I just let it travel across naturally. If it travels too fast then you can stop it with tissue but I just want to create a soft gradation from the bottom upwards. Next I want to paint the stems or little branches for all the plants. So for that I used a thick consistency mixture of burnt sienna with graphite grey to create a really dark brown and I switched to my liner brush this time in order to create very fine lines and I'm just going to paint it lightly to create delicate lines. For some of the longer delicate branches, I also like to add little leaves and for that I like to vary the greens using the lighter mixture and the darker mixture as well. I'm also going to use this opportunity to build on the layer of the vegetation here by adding the dark green from a mixture of sap green with ultramarine violet and I'm just going to add more shadows so there's a bit more depth for the greenery surrounding the window. I also like to add small loose leaves and this is not attached to the branches but I find that this creates a more natural and delicate feel to the painting. I'm going to add really fine branches for the flower bush as well and just like before I am extending it very lightly using the tip of my brush so I can add more flowers and also finer leaves. Next, I took out Bleed Proof White and I mixed it with a little bit of Buff Titanium so it's not completely white and I'm just going to use the tip of my brush to line the frame of the window. If you added too much water and the white isn't too visible, you can also layer it on so you have a more opaque light color. 
While I wait for the frames to dry off, I'm just going to build the texture of the window covering. I used the same mixture that I had left on my palette, which consists of the light blue with a tiny bit of graphite grey from the glass window. And I'm using a dry brush consistency to paint the streaky wooden texture of the planks. Next, I'm going to build the form of the window covers and for this, I used a mixture of graphite grey with the ultramarine violet and I'm going to use a thin to medium consistency to paint the bottom of the horizontal planks as well as the sides and the bottom of the window. And this will just create the effect of shadows, giving it a little bit more depth and three-dimensional form. I also want to accentuate the individual planks and for this I use a thicker consistency of the same mix to line them horizontally as well as vertically but I try to make the lines a little bit thinner so the shadows underneath look a bit more distinct. I feel like the initial shadows that I painted need a little bit more color now that I've painted more of the individual planks. So I'm going to go back in with the same color in a slightly thicker consistency and I'm going to paint it a little bit thicker this time. I'm also going to paint three dots on the horizontal plank of wood and this is just to represent nails and also give a little bit of detail. Going back to the glass window now, I use the exact same color which is a mix of graphite grey and ultramarine violet and I'm just going to line one side as well as the bottom horizontal line for each of the frame and this will just give it more of a three dimensional form. I'm going to use the same grey mixture again but this time I added Sean Brilliant into the mix to create more of a warm grey and I'm using the tip of my brush to line the brick frame. I'm not too worried about the line being a bit more thick this time and I also want the consistency to be fairly light. In fact, I also use the clean damp brush to make the lines look a bit more blurry. After that, I'm just going to go back to my liner brush and using the same color, I'm going to add depth by creating thinner lines for the bricks and just lining it and also to outline some of the frame of the window a little bit more just to create a bit more depth and shadow. Here I'm mixing Burnt Sienna, John Brilliant with Permanent Yellow Deep to create the shadows later but I also realized that I feel like I need to layer on a bit more color for the base color of the wall so I end up creating the same mixture again and use a light consistency and spread it around randomly to create a bit more texture and also add a bit more color. Because I want the additional texture, I end up using a very light load on my brush to create the dry brush texture. Now going to the darker mixture of Burnt Sienna Jean Brilliant and Permanent Yellow Deep, I'm just going to dot the color underneath the plant and if the base color that I painted earlier is still a little bit wet, I'm just going to leave it as is because I like the variation of the cleaner brush strokes mixed with the softer transition because of how the paint travels on the wet surface. Using the same color, I'm just going to use a very light consistency to paint the corners at the bottom and I find that this creates a nice frame or a vignette to the painting. Then adding more burnt sienna on my palette, I'm just going to add the shadows for the window as well as the flower bush as well. For the corners or the vignette, I end up using more of a muted color around the corners by adding a little bit of that grey mixture to the yellow mix. The surface now is a bit more wet than I want it to be, so I just dry it quite lightly before I paint on the shadows underneath the flower bush. As I'm painting, I can see that 
my brush strokes are quite crisp but I still want some of the softer transitions so for some parts you can do this manually by using a clean damp brush and just softening the edges with it so you have a nice variation of the softer shadows and the harsher shadows I'm quite happy with the overall balance and the value of the color so I'm just going to dry the painting off but before I take off the masking tape and reveal the painting I also feel like I want to add a bit of color on the green vegetation around the window so for that I use a thick consistency of bleed proof white to paint dots as well as five petaled flowers and this will just create a white base for you to paint whatever color you want for the flowers for this case I chose the same color as the window covers and I find that this is a nice complement to the yellow color of the wall again but it also links the blue to the window cover and it just makes it look a bit more consistent this way however of course this is optional and you can choose any colors you want or you can leave it completely plain without any flowers as well after that I just added a bit more shadows behind those flowers to make it a bit more consistent with the rest and just do the final touch-ups, add a bit more leaves if you feel like you need to add additional leaves to finish up the composition. At the end, I also felt like the window is a little bit too light in comparison to the almost white frame. So I ended up using the same mix of graphite grey with the ultramarine violet, but I added more graphite grey this time. So the color of the glass window isn't too similar to the cover of the window. After that, I feel like I'm pretty much done, so I'm just going to unmask the sides to reveal the painting. So this is the finished painting. I'm really happy with how the composition and the colors turn out for this one. If you guys want the outline, I think I'll also make it available in my coffee shop for you to download. And yeah, that's it for this one. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be listed in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!